Right. Good afternoon, Mr. Maz Hussain. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking time out. And if you can please introduce yourself and tell us about your organization. Well, uh, uh, I'm from Hyderabad, Hyderabad Dakhan. And uh, the organization COVA, Confederation of Voluntary Associations, is a network of about 800 organizations in India, in different parts of the country. And we work on basically issues of peace and communal harmony. And uh, apart from working in India, we also work in Kashmir and many other places, different states of the country. We also work at the South Asia level, state uh, SAC countries, we have started work. Uh, basically, our uh, philosophy is that uh, whether it is domestically or at international level, uh, it is the common people who should set the agendas, political agenda. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in our country also, and I think in Pakistan and every place, uh, it is the politicians who set the agenda. And most of the time, the politicians don't set development agenda, but uh, they indulge in identity politics, divisive politics, uh, something which will be easier for them, and uh, which is not exactly in the interest of the people. So first and foremost, uh, we have uh, this campaign in India called Citizens' Assertion Campaign that citizens should start asserting themselves, setting the political agenda, determining the direction of political processes. Uh, in line with the same policy, we are in the process of setting up a center at the South Asia level called Center for People's Foreign Policy in South Asia. See, uh, with foreign policy, you see, at least with globalization, at least 50% of our lives are in impacted by our foreign policies. Minimum, if not more. And whether it is this expenditure on defense, whether it is the import and export of certain communities, whatever. It is at least 50% of our uh, foreign policy, I mean, impacts uh, our lives. But unfortunately, most people are not aware of this. And most people, even if they are aware, if they want to say something, don't get, don't get a platform. So what we are planning to do is set up this center wherein we will try and make common people in all these countries become aware, more aware of uh, the impact of foreign policy on their lives and uh, make them more uh, knowledgeable about various uh, issues, including each other. Unfortunately, the amount of knowledge and understanding which we have about our mutual country, uh, neighboring countries is next to nil. Uh, whereas maybe we know a lot about America and UK and all that, but we don't know about <coughs> the neighboring countries. So that, and finally, to uh, provide a platform to the common people. In by saying that we want to provide a platform, what I would like to say is, it is possible. Supposing if everybody talks of uh, visa-free Asia, South Asia, visa-free you know regime, uh, but uh, it is a few people who are talk about it. Though many, many more people want this, but they don't have a way to express this. So what, uh, one of the things that we would be doing subsequently as a part of this process is say, uh, have uh, human chains formed in about 3,000 or 4,000 cities and towns and villages in all these eight countries at the same time on the same day. In their own places they can do it. And, uh, uh, you know, for visa free South Asia. So that, we think, will impact on the thinking of the policymakers. Uh, you talked about building linkages and giving voice to the common man. How aware are the Indians or the people of subcontinent about the effects of climate change? You see, recently there was a survey in India and there one of the top most uh, uh, issues of concern which has emerged for the people is climate change because uh, of two reasons. One is uh, for various reasons in the last at least four or five years Everybody has been talking more and more about climate change that has taken center stage. And uh, secondly, media also is, uh, you know, really uh, projecting this uh, ill effects of climate change and people themselves are experiencing it. You know, in terms of uh, changes in the weather cycles, in terms of extremities of uh, the weather, whether it is temperature, whether it is rainfall, in terms of uh, damage to the crops. So people have now started immediately linking anything that is happening uh, in their lives to this climate uh, change in the climate that is taking place. Now, Indians have made a lot of progress in renewable energy and are thinking about how using solar energy to, you know, to provide light in villages in the rural communities. Tell me, how, f how f is the government committed to this project? What is the response of the people? How far will this project go? See, it's very unfortunate, but both India and Pakistan are, uh, or South Asia for that matter, 
are so very much blessed with this uh, possibility of tapping uh, uh, solar energy. But there is nothing which is being done. Whatever is being done is cosmetic, totally inessential, in ineffective. Still, we are obsessed with nuclear energy. In India, you see with this agreement with uh, one, two, three agreement with America and all that, and whatever circumstances. But it is, we feel very, very unfortunate. Instead of investing money in nuclear power plants and others, if even if a fraction of that can be invested in research to tap solar energy, because solar energy may not be available that much in the Western countries, but in our subcontinent, especially in India and Pakistan, it is something which is available, you know, at least 12 hours a day. 24 hours, uh, 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 12 hours a day and uh, 365 days in a year. There's hardly maybe one or two days where, you know, solar energy may not be available. So I think that in that sense, uh, I would disagree that, you know, we have done something. No, we have not. We are lagging far behind. All right. And in the end, what message do you have for the youth of Pakistan, India and the subcontinent particularly? See, as far as the youth is concerned, I would like to say that, you know, uh, the youth, unlike uh, people of the old earlier generations, uh, earlier generations still used to believe in meeting for establishing contact. And so this obsession with visa. Now I think with the internet, with the Facebook, with the Twitter and all that, you don't have to meet to be in contact. And I would uh, like to urge the youth to start, start establishing contact through these technologies. And... Uh, it's as good as meeting, you know, people who are, you know, aware of this technology. And uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, we see the future for this whole process in the youth. And if the youth don't do anything, then there will be no future for them, for humanity. Excellent, perfect. Great.